So for me, uh, I was never a satellite person. I didn't. I knew of satellites, thought they were interesting, but. My journey began some 20 years ago when I went to Rwanda, Africa. It was just after the genocide. It was a time where the topic of conversation was death and malnutrition. And I went there and started connecting kids to the schools, uh, connecting schools to the internet and connecting kids to the internet. And what I saw was their eyes light up with hope and opportunity as they saw the world's information and they started to ingest it and create new ideas. And it was a really wonderful thing to see. And so I began connecting those kids. And as I began connecting those kids, at some point, I realized that just doing it terrestrially wasn't enough. I had to, to zoom out and scale up. And it was at that point that I founded O3B Networks and built the Mio constellation. And that was my transition from terrestrial networks to satellite, all in the context of one mission. And the mission is to bridge, to connect every school in the world by 2022. The first time that I brought connectivity to children, and then time and time again watching that, and watching the kids grow up, some of them today work for us. From not knowing anything and growing up in a war-torn country, to actually being a productive and useful and incredibly uh, helpful inventor of technologies that are helping their own people. And so that's been a wonderful memory. Of course, all the the initial moments for starting a company and raising money and just the excitement of first turning a system on and getting connectivity. Those are all things that, that really create the pieces of memories that are wonderful. It's been a single mission to bring internet access to all the schools of the world. So we have a mission, 2022, to accomplish this. I've been investing and inventing and developing technologies that together will help bridge that digital divide for rural and remote schools. I've been working and in, in investing and in creating nonprofits to help make that happen. And I believe now I stand here today or sit here today, and I believe it will happen. I've seen so much progress over the past few years and so much momentum in the uh, intergovernmental arenas that I believe it's gonna, it will happen by 2022. I don't know if everyone would agree, but be very humble because what you did yesterday doesn't matter for what you do tomorrow. Every single day, you have to do it. You have to come up with the idea. You have to be driving an idea. You have to be encouraging and supporting others to help have ideas that go along with that mission. So that's something which if you lose and you think it will happen, it won't happen. It just grinds to a halt. So be more interested in the mission and what you're doing than anything else. Because it's not about success, it's not about accomplishment for accomplishment's sake, it's about accomplishing a goal and a mission. And the success and those other nice memories of, of, of positiveness will come with that. I would tell them to pick something they're gonna do that will make them happy, will make them proud, Look long term, think of a mission. Think of something that when they're 80, they can look back and be proud to be a part of and have made happen. Each piece of the satellite, each piece of the system and the mission, all of those contribute to the greater good and they should be thinking of what they're doing and understand its context for that larger mission. So they can explain it to others, they can explain it to their children over time and their families and it will give them a, a great context for what they're doing. The industry is going to become part of the communications industry in a way that it hasn't been before. It'll be an accepted piece of the communications industry, not sort of the ugly stepbrother in the corner. Right? Historically, satellite services were things you only got if you had to get. But they're going to move to something which are just as good as other things. They'll never take over cable or beat 5G. There's just no possible way for a satellite to do that in, a, in, in mass. But there is a possibility for it to do it in rural and remote communities. Meanwhile, there's going to be a recognition that satellites are providing a, ma a massive and important service for connectivity, for mobile areas, but all for things in, mo in motion like planes and trains, but also all the other sensory data that we can get from satellites to see our Earth and help our Earth. Now, I will caution that the amount of new satellites that have been coming up 
and it's they're cheaper. It's easy to get a satellite up. We'll have tens of thousands of new ones. We are headed for a major space calamity. Without new regulation, probably within the next three years, you will see, my guess, is a beginning bad scene. And then you'll see a major calamity another five years after that if we don't do anything. We already saw the ASAT issue just a few weeks ago, a collision, intentional collision at 300 kilometers approximately, and the shrapnel went up to over 2,000 kilometers. So we are getting into a position where we're going to litter the skies with debris and shrapnel unless the governments do something and really buckle down on industry and say you need to have reliable satellites. You need to ensure you do not have overlapping orbits. So it's incumbent upon industry to ask for that and it's incumbent upon governments to get together, work together and create a regulatory environment that we can, we can grow in for a long time.